Thank you. So just let me begin by thanking the organizers. Everybody's here. And this is the title of my talk. You can see, and this is done with my student, Noirita, who is here. And the motivation of the talk, this talk comes from experiment. And I'll begin somewhere here. Uh, about eight years back, from the group of Steve Tranick at Urbana Champion, they did some experiments on soft materials. Essentially, they, for example, they looked at this colloidal particle uh, on a soft uh, lipid tube. And when he, then they go back and they calculate the men's square displacement of this colloidal particle and plot as a function of time, they did not find anything interesting. It was scaling linearly with the time, so this is normal diffusion. But uh, when they calculated this displacement distribution of these colloidal particles, and they found something interesting because they did not find the usual Gaussian distribution of the displacement for this colloid. So initially, it is something more like exponential. As the time progresses, it eventually becomes Gaussian in this case. But there are other ex examples where it never becomes Gaussian within the time scale of the experiment. For example, this one done, I think, last year, where these people looked at colloidal particle, or nanoparticle, you can call, in a polymer matrix, like a polymer gel, confined in a gel mesh-like network. And they could find that the displace, the, this mean square displacement is linear in time. This is normal diffusion. But the uh, displacement distribution is not Gaussian. So they have a, for small displacement, it's Gaussian. But for long displacement, it is non-Gaussian. It's more like exponential. So I would say it's um, non-Gaussian, but yet the mean square displacement is linear in time. And I also should want to, actually want to mention this work. This is done by my colleague at IIT Bombay, by Orindom. And they looked at uh, this single molecule dynamics in polymer matrix, polymer thin films. And they could see the similar thing. They could see that the diffusion sometimes is subdiffusive, subdiffusive sometimes it's diffusive, which is normal. But the distribution displacement is non-Gaussian. So this is not very uncommon. So the, the things are as follows that we have issue like whether the dynamics is Gaussian or non-Gaussian, whether dynamics is normal or subdiffusive, which basically means whether the mean square displacement scales linearly with time or uh, scales fractionally with time. And also what happens if I change the size of the tracer. If the time, if time permits, we can discuss this. So motivated by this series of experiments, we came up with a very generic model. So and this is our simulation model. It's a very general model. So we're not mimicking any particular experiment. The model is as follows. So you have this tracer. You can see this is my tracer, this tiny purple color ball. This is my tracer. And I have collection of polymers. This is my collection of polymers. So if I take one of these polymers, the polymer would look something like this. It's a cartoon of this. So this polymer is made of 20 monomers. You can count there are 20 of them. And this monomer is connected by spring. And this spring is called Fini spring. This is uh, a har like harmonic spring, but when the displacement is small. But then there is a, a very high barrier. So eventually, you cannot stretch a beyond a point. So these bonds are cannot be broken. OK, so these are like Fini springs. And the polymer is made model in such a way that internal monomers, for example, starting from bit number 6 to bit number 15, which are in purple, these monomers are sticky to the tracer, this purple tr tracer. So how do you model this? You model the interaction between this tracer and these internal monomers with this Leonard Jones, shown in red. And this depth of this Leonard Jones, which is epsilon, is my stickiness parameter. But the rest of the polymer is repulsive to this tracer. And, the, and, and I have many such polymers. And these polymers are also repulsive to each other. So they will not go and stick to each other. OK, and the, only the tracer will stick to this internal part of the polymer. So this is my model. And with this model, we carried out a, a Langeva simulation. But remember that I have inertia in my, in my term, uh, in my equation of motion. And we run many trajectories. And uh, the results are uh, based on average over many such trajectories. And uh, so let me show you the results. For example, when you look at the uh, mean square displacement of the tracer, that purple color ball, I can tell you. So we just calculate this mean square displacement. I plot as a function of time. This is log log plot, obviously. And you get ballistic regime, which is expected for small time. Then it becomes either diffusive or subdiffusive. And that depends on how many polymers you have in the simulation box. For example, if you have small, small number of polymers, this is volume fraction of the polymer, then it is more likely to be diffusive. But if you increase the volume fraction of the polymer, the dynamics of the tracer becomes subdiffusive. Okay. And uh, the similar thing happens if I fix the volume fraction and change the stickiness parameter. 
as I make it more and more sticky, the, the dynamics becomes slower and it becomes subdiffusive. This is number one. Number two is, you can see that I have three, uh, two set of uh, actually plots. Uh, some of them are in black, uh, in solid lines, some of them dotted. Now this, uh, what are, uh, this, when you have these dotted lines, they are actually representing a case where the simulation are, are done with the polymers being frozen during the simulation. So during the simulation, I don't allow my polymers to move. So this is the frozen polymeric background, background and I, you can see that keeping all the parameters constant by freezing the polymer, dynamics slows down and it becomes more and more subdiffuse. So I can show you th this exponent beta, which is a measure of the uh, subdiffusion or diffusion. It is close to one, which is more like normal. But as you as you increase the volume fraction, it drops. And essentially, and, and in particular, when the network, uh, when the background is frozen, it is quite small. So it is actually a frozen network would actually make the diffusion subdiffusive. The similar thing would happen if I keep the volume fraction constant and increase the stickiness. Okay. So crowding and stickiness actually makes it subdiffusive. Then we had look. Uh, then we looked at uh, what is called velocity autocorrelation function. How it is defined? It is and this is plot, it's plotted as a function of the time, the, the, the time difference, I'd say. And you see that uh, for small volume fraction, it's nothing interesting. But if you increase the volume fraction, it starts showing a negative value here. Here you have see you can see a small negative value for the velocity autocorrelation function, uh, especially when high volume fraction. And if I make the stickiness parameter very high, like epsilon 4 or 6, you can see that this is highly, highly negative. And these negative values are actually signatures for what is known as confined motion of the tracer. So it's kind of confined in a cage formed by these polymers, and this kind of caging motion would give rise to this negative value of the velocity autocorrelation, which is uh, because this tracer is changing direction very frequently. And this is a trajectory. For example, I have many such trajectories. This is one of the trajectories. You can see the black line is for mobile, the mobile uh, polymer network. And you can see that cages are formed when the mo polymers are mobile. But these cages are transient and they're breaking. And But if I uh, fix these polymers, if I freeze these polymers, these cages which are formed, they're quite stable. And as a result, you're more likely to get subdiffusive motion when the net, uh, polymers are frozen rather than when this uh, when the polymers are allowed to move during the simulation. And also we could find that if there are not many polymers, you have moderate crowding, it is possible to find a situation where your dynamics is still normal. So MSD scales linearly with time, but your displacement distribution is non-Gaussian, which I'll, I'll mention in the next slide. And there are recent experiments, this, is, this, is, this appeared after our paper got published, and you can see that people are seeing this uh, RNA protein particles to exhibit non-Gaussian and subdiffusive motion. Okay. To know whether this is Gaussian or not, we just calculate this non-Gaussian parameter and you can see that for intermediate time it could be non-Gaussian but eventually it becomes Gaussian when the time is long enough. And here when, when my polymers are mobile or allowed to move during the simulation, it's more likely it's very close to being Gaussian. Only when I freeze my polymeric background, it becomes non-Gaussian and it is and it increases as a function of volume fraction. Similarly here, if I keep the volume fraction constant and change the stickiness parameter, it becomes non-Gaussian. But this non-Gaussian behavior is intermediate time scale behavior. Long time scale, everything as expected become Gaussian. Okay, so I would say that freeing the environment makes the dynamics non-Gaussian. So as the stickiness of stickiness or the volume fraction of the polymer can make the dynamics non-Gaussian in the intermediate time scale. And how to explain this actually, very recently, Sebastian came up with a model, and so has Metzler. So they came up with a model which goes something like this. They said, okay, my diffusivity of the tracer is a function of time, is a, flux, is a random function of time, so that when the tracer exhibits this diffusion, it, uh, diffusion co coefficient changes a function of time randomly. This is an, a signature of the heterogeneity in the environment, and on, based on this, it is possible to explain this kind of non-Gaussian behavior. In other words, you have distribution of diffusivity. And uh, yeah, I have two minutes, so I'll just mention this briefly. Uh, we also did some analysis on what is called trapping of the tracer. So we can, this is my tracer, the blue ball is my tracer, and these two red balls are monomers, and this, they can belong to the same polymer chain, or they can belong to different polymer chain. Our definition is such that when this uh, tracer is within this distance, one point one times sigma, sigma is the size of the monomer, then I call it trapped within 1.1 sigma of 
two or more monomers of the polymer. And obviously, if you plot this trapping tail distribution as a function of time, you see it decays, but I don't see any long tail. So the moments are well, def well defined. There is no problem in the moments. As you increase the volume fraction, as expected, this average trapping time increases, so as on increasing the uh, stickiness parameter. Also, we had looked at bigger tracer. For example, if I make the tracer bigger, what happens? So we just made it, we did some simulation with bigger tracer as big, five times bigger, the monomer. And we see that if with bigger tracer, this heterogeneity averages out very, very fast, and you are more, most likely to get Gaussian kind of distribution, and that is what you get uh, with bigger tracer. And this is also uh, go, uh, goes with the experimental observation from this group, which appeared just a year back. So I'll just, uh, oh, okay. I'll just try, try uh, want to conclude my work. Actually, I think I have one more minute. So, uh, so uh, what I try to convey that crowding, if you make more and more, more and more polymer, or you make this polymer more and more sticky, then the dynamics become slow and it eventually becomes subdiffusive. And if the, my polymeric environment is frozen, then it is even more subdiffusive compared to mobile polymeric environment. And as these polymers, which are actually the sticky, sticky zone of the polymer, which are like traps, the interest dynamic remains non Gaussian even for moderately longer times. And it may be possible that during your time of experiment, you may not see them to become Gaussian because your time scale for experiment is not locked enough. But eventually, everything should become Gaussian. And this connects to a very large number of problems on tracer diffusion in polymeric materials. And if you want to know more, you can read our paper and we can discuss. I'm here. And this is my team. So this is done with my student, Noirita, should be here. I should thank SCRB, CSIR, and IIT Bombay for funding. And uh, is putting up a poster which is slightly different, which is on self propelled Jana stressor in sticky polymeric environment. And I think you would like it, so you please come and visit our poster. Thank you very much for your attention. Yeah, uh, thank you, Rajeshi. And uh, we have a couple of minutes for questions. Like there is this model of continuous time random walk where like they used to stay some time and then uh, uh, explore. Uh, yeah, 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 it is. So there, do you know what is that? Is there also the distribution is known? I mean, and is it like non-Gaussian? I mean, there is, you know, it's subdiffusive, right? But uh, can is you, it, it uh, but is what like, is the distribution? It's like CTRW, but we are not sure. We have not analyzed. But there is the distribution sub, I mean, non-Gaussian? I, I don't remember. Uh, I think the, what I remember, the distribution for the time has a long tail. So CTRW, if you have levy flights, I understand your CTRW is saying you're going there and st S staying with staying a long time there. distribution rate. Yeah, I have to go and check. Yeah. But this oh. is all, all, all these observations are actually uh, intermediate time, long time scale. Everything becomes Gaussian. I don't think it will be non Gaussian. Yeah, maybe we could continue this. There, there was a question here. So, um, here, so to see the this non Gaussian to Gaussian or vice versa, this this transformation. From a very small tracer to large one, is it a kind of non-monotonic one? Like so we have not analyzed. We have done very small tracer, and then a big one. In between, we have not done it. Okay. It's more likely that if you have a bigger tracer, it does not see the heterogeneity. It averages out heterogeneity very fast. Mm -hmm. So you'll have a Gaussian distribution, maybe. But but this uh, is true also for the very very small tracer. Very small tracer in the intermediate time scale, you can see what is known as non-Gaussian distribution. Okay. But long time scale, everything will become Gaussian. So only the intermediate time phenomena. Okay. Yeah. I think we have one question at the back. So your polymer is like a block polymer with the middle block being sticky. So is that, uh, I have two questions. One is that, is that motivated by the experimental polymers? And secondly, if you kept the number of uh, sticky polymers the same but distributed them randomly along the chain, uh, do these effects yeah, persist? We have not done the second part. Okay. We have done control simulations by making these polymers repulsive, no sticky, not, not sticky. Then we did not find trapping, and it's less likely you get subdiffusion. Because this is still quite low volume fraction. This is semi dilute regime of polymer. And what is the first question? So is the block polymer nature of your uh, model polymers uh, motivated by the experiments? Uh... In a way, because experiments are done on polymer gel. And mm -hmm. not doing polymer gel, but if you have such things and if you freeze it, it is behaving more like a gel, but it's not a true gel. Okay, uh, maybe we end with one last question. 
wanted to ask, uh, is the freezing of the polymer related to the glass transition? No, it is not. So that is the point because when it is not glass transition because we are not in that regime. We are not a very low volume fraction. It is semi dilute regime of polymer. You can think of freezing of polymers. If you have chemically different polymer, which is sluggish, moving very slow. So on, you can do on a computer, you can freeze it so that you have a background which is very sluggish. 